guys again to basically just beg. I'm here to beg for the veterans who are in your community, who are literally begging, 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 and pleading for access to medicine. That's what this is. We're talking about medical cannabis. So I came up here last time, gave you some great information, some great statistics. One of the things I want to rehash on again is remember that veterans died a 50% greater rate from accidental overdose than civilians do. Remember that, all right? So when you're thinking about all these veterans that are in your community, that are this opioid epidemic that's killing so many civilians across the country, veterans are dying at two to one rate from accidental overdose, all right? In the states where there's a medical cannabis program, we've seen a reduction in overdose deaths by 25%. That is an absolute number. That is one that is lives. Those are lives that we're talking about. Those are lives that we're accounting for. So we're begging for access. We don't need to go drive an hour or two hours to go to the dispensary. They need access to the medicine here in the community. You know, when I was driving in here, I saw all kinds of pharmacies. Think about that. The number one killer in the United States now is pharmaceutical companies, right? So Walgreens, CVS, all these are right up the road. And now you guys are talking about maybe not allowing medical cannabis in here that's not killed one person in the last 10,000 years when the number one killer now is pharmaceutical medications. All right, so think about that. When you go to vote for this, think about the veterans that I begged to come out here tonight to speak. And they said, no, I can't. I can't be in a crowd. I can't stand here with people in my back. I can't do that. I can't come out and, and talk the way you do, Joshua. I can't advocate that way. Think about those men and women who serve, put their lives on the line so that they can come back here for somebody to tell them they can't get access to medicine in their community. Think about that. That's all I wanted to say tonight. Just think about that. And you know, the um, law enforcement had a great concern last time. How do they enforce this? Everybody gets in, issued a medical cannabis ID card in the community. So it's one that if they've got their card, pretty much, you know, it's legal. Unless it's green flower, and he can tell you right now, they can find out if it's green flower or not. It's right there in your, in your hand. It's not going to be in green flower form if it's coming from a medical dispensary. So there's really good ways for him to know whether or not somebody's legally carrying uh, medicine on them. So that's something that, to me, it's, it's a moot point because it's just like a license when you're there. So just think about that. Think about those men and women who are here in your community, who have served their country honorably, who are literally dying at the hands of the VA every single day. Every single day. I told you all about the 50,000 pills I take every year from the VA. And it's been that way since I was 24 years old. So think about those. Thank you guys for your time so much. I'm always there as a reference point, somebody you can contact.